Dragon, this is a really special box because I'm one of the first people to have this box. Now this comes straight to us from New York, New York. And that's because it's from a guy named Antonio who found these first. He was the first. He will not be the first in the comment section down below, but he was the first to find these. This is the Rival Hera, or at least it should be. I haven't opened it yet, so I'd hate to be making a promise that I can't keep. Antonio sold this to me at a pretty steep markup, but uh, my boy Dennis deserves a huge thank you because he not only was a moderator at HBZ End War, but he also came in and was the, the hookup to get this from Antonio up in New York down here to the workshop in Hotlanta. So let's take a look inside. Hopefully we have most of the goodies and it appears that we have the box so we can do an actual unboxing which is most excellent friends. So this is the rival Hera. It will retail for 60 United States dollars at Target. It is a Target exclusive and it's part of the Phantom Corpse line. Now everybody tells me that I mispronounce corpse and they're like, oh, it's like the Army Corps or the Marine Corps or anything like that. And I understand that in America you pronounce it that way and it's probably proper to pronounce it that way. But I'm undead, so anytime you get an opportunity to say the word corpse in common conversation, you seize it. Anyway, so this is the Phantom Corps line of blasters and it's it's sweet. So this is essentially Hasbro's attempt to take the division between the Mighty Red team and the lackluster blue team and bridge the gap with a rogue unit. And so that's what these are. They're white, they're neutral, they have a very cool hoplite sort of helmet on them, which is a very six hour of them. And the purpose of that is that it's still keeping with that relatively Hellenic theme that all of these rival blasters have. Now, you can see that the flywheels are horizontal. I think that that was unnecessary. Had they been vertical, the blaster would have been much, much narrower, which would have been nice for holstering. I think now that I'm holding it in my hand, it is a little too big to be a holsterable full-scale primary. Now, there are a lot of things to talk about in regards to how this blaster is going to work. First off, feeds magazines, Uzi style, just like the Apollo and has a magazine release down below. Now, we will get into the actual internals of this loading mechanism in the modification guide itself, but up top, we have a jam door and then the batteries will go in here. However, some things are better in first person, so we're gonna yank the GoPro off the stand, we're gonna put it on our forehead, and we're gonna try first person with the GoPro for the first time in a long time, because that's the best way to make reviews like this, is to get real hands-on FPV footage. But Blaster is relatively sweet, has decent ergonomics, it is relatively well balanced. One thing that I do want to point out is that I'm always talking about how I have relatively large adult sized hands. What I mean by that is that my fingers are pretty long as a relatively tall individual and I am having a hard time wrapping all the way around this handle. That might be easier to show in this perspective so I want to point out that the handle is much much thicker than the Apollo because by virtue of just sheer engineering necessity this not only has to hold an entire magazine inside but it also has to manage space for the switch here and the mechanism here, so it's got to be even thicker than the Apollo. Not the end of the world, this back area is all battery space, and then the muzzle device is pretty minimal, which is excellent. Let's take it outside and take a look. Alrighty guys, so the Hera has been loaded up with this magazine, which has genuine rival ammunition in it, so we're going to go ahead and leave that inside of the handle. I really do dig that magazine release. I thought that I would not like it as much as I like the Apollos, but uh, as time has gone on, it's grown on me. Time here being all of the, the 30 minutes that it's taken me to, to fall in love with it. So here we have this. This is different than a standard battery tray in that it holds C batteries, not D batteries. That's the only thing we're saying about this. It is slightly different. However, it is irrelevant. Now, while this might skew our results slightly to the positive, I will be using the rechargeable rifle tray because I already had one and it's cheaper than going out and buying a bunch of C batteries. So. Uh, we will be testing with the rechargeable battery, which it is compatible with. And I've said before that if you're not planning on modifying and converting to LiPo, you really should be using the rechargeable pack because you save a lot of money in the long run. I have two extra magazines, both of which are loaded up with headshot ammo. They have uh, much better prices, better color varieties than the stock rival ammo, and I really enjoy uh, using it. They sent me a bunch for NVZ, and I haven't used up all of it. So as we rev this up... 
not super loud, not super quiet. Take a look inside the jam door. You can see how these are going to feed almost with a spirally mechanism that will push them into those two flywheels. Now there is of course a safety mechanism here as well. So let's go ahead and fire at these cups, kind of get a basic feel for this. The stock itself, relatively comfortable. It's a little wider than I'd like. It tends to roll off of my, my rather thin sort of shoulder pad, but I mean, it's, it's decent. With the battery in, weight tilts a little bit to the back end, but a lot of people are just gonna chop this whole thing off and find a way to sneak the LiPo up here into the front, I have no doubt. This is not really a foregrip. This is really, I, I wanna call it the rival strife of sorts because it is a minimized, basic, uh, magazine-fed rival blaster. So it is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and fire a couple of times into the distance, get a feel for the range. That is pretty standard rifle performance. I do wanna say that the safety switch down here is mechanical. It stops the firing trigger, and that this is in fact a semi-automatic blaster that would not be terribly difficult to convert to fully automatic, but out of the package, it is a uh, semi-automatic. Man, I think that the white is really cool, and since all of these pieces section off in certain ways, it's gonna be really, really easy to paint. So let's go ahead and knock over some cups, nerf some mortal enemy. Wow, I'm gonna have to put that through a replay because I didn't, dang. What? What the f All right, so we've exhausted our first 12 round that came with the blaster. Let's go ahead and load up another 12 round, this time full of headshot ammo. Should perform roughly the same. It goes so fast. All right, and then the last thing that I wanted to prove is that this does become far more compact once you throw in the Apollo magazine. It's very similar to the profile that the Apollo gives you with that sort of performance. So only seven shots this time. However, we only needed three to completely obliterate our cups. My neighbor's probably not gonna appreciate that. Rate of fire is pretty much as fast as you can pull this trigger. It is very snappy, very responsive. Again, love the uh, the hoplite helmet here. Can't get over how really compact and cool this blaster is. And then most importantly, I cannot wait to crack this open and modify it for you. It is really awful weather out right now for reviews, but we did it anyway because I absolutely love you guys. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you're sticking around, make sure that you subscribe and bell me so that you don't miss all of the latest and greatest in Nerf reviews, modification guides, and custom builds. Much love, Nerf on, Drac out.